Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I am coming back at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In this video, I'm going to take these Dark Ops buildings, and we're going to paint them, uh, and we're going to uh, actually paint the wood, uh, wood flooring uh, with some washes. I'm going to basically do mostly washes. But the first thing what I want to do is take some of this blue painter's tape and I want to cut it out to the right size and I'm going to lay it down inside the building covering the wooden floor. All right, so uh, let me go ahead and lay this out uh, and then I'll cut it to the right size. I uh, laid them out and I cut them down to the proper size of the buildings and then what I'm planning on doing is covering the floor so that when I do a spray paint primer on the building, the wooden floor will not get primed. Basically, it'll be an exposed MDF. And it's a little tough getting the uh, edges to match up on the inside. Uh, there you go. And you can see this painter's tape is just shy of being the full width of the floor. And that's why I have a second half piece right here to, uh, there we go, to cover the other exposed wood along the top area right there. Now I'm going to do this to the ground floor and the second floor. Well, basically, I don't want the uh, wooden floor texture that Dark Ops had put in these buildings to go to waste. So, um, and it's just an added, it's just an added touch. Okay, now that they're all covered, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these outside. We're going to prime them uh, gray. And then I'm going to, on top of that, prime white. So then it's basically going to be double primed. Okay, you can see now they are white. Uh, I use the Rust-Oleum flat white. And the uh, you can see the painter's tape is starting to peel up on a couple of them. Now these other three colors, the self-etching primer, the dark walnut and the flat red I used on the roof structures. So the roofs will all have a different color to them. Let's go ahead and pull the uh, paper out and you can see the uh, wood floor underneath. There we go. All right, let's get another one peeled out of there. This is the Cafe Bertangleries or something like that. I probably butchered the name. All right, so let me go ahead and get all these papers pulled out and then I'll be right back. All right, now using these Vallejo washes, I've got dark rust and I've got dark brown. And I plan to use these on the floor of the um, various buildings to kind of highlight or darken up the wood. Kind of as a wood stain. Now, I don't take the uh, washes and I don't thin them down with any kind of uh, quick shade, mixing medium, or flow aid, or anything like that. I'm just going straight wash. Got to put my glasses on so that I can see what I'm doing. And then here we go. 
Also, understand that this video is pre-recorded. I'm doing a voice over after the fact. Uh, it makes it easier to work on the models, not having to talk to you um, and come up with interesting things to say while I'm constructing or painting or anything. And then I can come at you afterwards uh, after I've completed it. Uh, and that way I can touch on anything or think about what I want to say. Uh, all right, so now we're just going to go ahead and stain this entire floor uh, and all the floors, and I'll be right back. All right, with that first building, dark brown in the middle, now we're going to take this second building and we're going to use rust. And then the last building, I think I'm just going to leave the current color because it's a kind of a lighter brown and I didn't want to darken it up. Seeing how much of a wash, I make sure I put enough. Because in the previous floor, I didn't put enough wash down. It soaked it all up. I put like four drops. That wasn't enough. Uh, and then I had to go back in and double it up. And that still wasn't enough to do both the ground and the second floor. Now, this dark rust has a reddish tint to it, like a reddish brown. Uh, make it look maybe like an oak or a, or a, I don't want to say maybe cedar. All right, let me do both floors and I'll be right back. All right, now that the roofs have dried uh, with the flat red, the dark walnut, and the self-etching primer, uh, this dark walnut uh, doesn't want to fit back down in there because the paint primer, the white, and then the dark walnut primer both uh, rub against each other. And so what I wound up doing was sanding down the roof right there where my thumb is. Uh, so that it would fit in there better. It's a very nice, tight, snug fit. And if you don't mind that, that's no problem. Uh, now, the self-etching primer, you might notice, has like kind of a green-gray, almost a field-gray look to it. It's a cool roof color. Yeah, you can see how tight that is. Uh, through gameplay, just lifting and placing and lifting and placing, it'll automatically clean it up. But I figured now would be a really good time to clean it up. All right, so uh, now this is dark gray, uh, also from Vallejo. And the dark gray I'm going to use for the brickwork along the bottom edge of the building. Now this technique uh, works great on white primer. If I had primed, let's say, gray on the building, then this would just darken the gray and it would highlight the brickwork. But because it's primed on a white, it actually colors the bricks kind of a light gray while highlighting the brickwork. Uh, using a wash, which is very fluid, uh, you get a, less of a, a risk of painting in the wrong area because of the cuts in the wood where the brick is. When you paint it, it just kind of, it's like paint by the numbers. It falls inside the brickwork. Now, I don't want to paint the door, so I just go up to the end of the brickwork where the door is located. And then I start on the other side of the door. All right, now you'll see that I've got the brickwork done on the majority of them. 
But now I'm pulling out dark rust because I want to do some brickwork using dark rust. Now, this dark rust is not going over the bare wood. It's actually going over white. So by going over white, it'll give you that uh, reddish brick look. Right now, I'm just getting it on there. I'll spread it around in the right direction. Uh, Yeah, going horizontally. Just taking my time, not wanting to splatter it over onto the rest of the wall or anything like that. Just want it to stay on the chimney. And you'll notice that uh, some of the bricks have more wash than others. Uh, that's okay because that gives you a, a very uh, motley look where the where you get these random dark or light bricks which uh, give it, give it more of a 3d effect okay with all the uh, chimneys done I did some chimneys using the gray look and some and you can see the base bricks on that one were done with the reddish uh, dark rust. So now with these three buildings complete, they actually have three different patterns. You'll notice that the first one is gray base, gray chimney. You'll notice the next one is red base, gray chimney. And you'll next is gray base, red chimney. And you can see how some of the bricks, I add a little bit extra wash on them to give them their random look. All right, now this is a this is a blue and I'm going to create my own wash using flow aid and uh, yeah, that right there is a 10 to 1 flow aid. And I also use some uh, flow medium. Yeah, the flow aid is actually supposed to be 20 to 1. Well, I mix it 10 to 1. And I put just one drop in. Or maybe two. <laughs> uh, I think the two drops actually made it too thin. So what I did was I added some more flow medium flow medium is what you would think of as your normal uh, wash extender uh, maybe the quick shade wash medium that you see from like army painter but a flow aid actually turns paint into uh, into a wash so this is basically the uh, paint flow aid and the mixing medium okay so now the blue I wanted to do the door and the sign and I probably should have used uh, hindsight actually I should have used a darker blue because when you take a color and you turn it into a wash it basically makes it very thin and um, you want the uh, you want the darker paint so that when you thin it out it still has that dark appeal all right let me get this and the sign and then we'll be right back all right you should be able to see the door and the sign is done so now I'm basically just going to be painting uh, dark green on some windows and possibly a door. This is a, I really like the Balejo washes. 
they seem to have a very good pigment mix. I'm very happy with them. All right, more of the same. All you're seeing is uh, wash, painting, doors, windows, etc. I'll be right back. All right, looking at the bottom left, you can see the green doors and the green windows. Now I got this paint that I haven't used in a long time. This is an orange uh, wash from Citadel, and it's still and it's in the hex bottle. How many years is that? Anybody out there? Put it in the comments if you know. But I think it was the 90s. All right, so we got our orange wash. It's got a lot of air bubbles in it. And I'm going to basically paint the bricks with this. There are... Um, on some of these buildings, you have some of the fascia has come off of the bricks, the plaster, per se. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this orange and I'm going to paint the exposed bricks. I'm looking for some exposed bricks. I don't see any. Taking a look. And voila, there's a spot where there's exposed bricks. Now, this orange is uh, a great color for the exposed bricks, but not a final color because I wind up going back over it with a, uh, a red wash that I created on my own. And I touched a couple of the bricks to give them uh, basically to, so it'll stand out. All right, let me go ahead and get some of these bricks done and I'll be right back. All right, the next color is another Citadel paint, yellow wash. Uh, I decided I was going to use a yellow wash on a doorway and maybe some of the uh, windows, and we'll see what that looks like. And once I get the yellow wash on, I'll be right back. All right, now what we're going to do is I'm going to take some of this Game Air uh, Blood Red, which is very thin anyway. It's made for an airbrush. So it's kind of got, it's already halfway to being a wash already. So what I do is I put a couple of drops in there and I'm going to create like, but it is thicker than wash. Um, not as thin as a, as a contrast paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some flow medium to it and basically make it a contrast paint. All right, so then we take this uh, flow aid again to thin it out even more, uh, make it more. That was one drop. So this is going to be like a very thin red basically like a wash i'm going to go ahead and add it here to some windows and i'm also going to touch up a few bricks with it as well all right 
I'll see when we get that done. All right, now after creating a little bit of a light gray mixture, I'm starting to put that on some windows as well. So I go around uh, finishing up the windows. And by painting these windows and doors, uh, you really give life to your buildings. All right, let me go ahead and do these windows and um, And I'll be right back. And now I'm just adding some texture, some washes to the roof, uh, basically just to give those uh, tiles or slats on the roof a little bit of extra uh, highlighting. Um, and you can see how just by going over this with a dark green wash over the uh, etched primer it is really bringing out those tiles i'm like where did i put my green all right but that's going to take a while uh so once i get those roofs textured or i should say washed i'll be right back all right once all the roofs are textured i go ahead and get uh some light tone from army painter and what i'm going to use the light tone for is anything that separates like the wood the sign uh, i'm just going right in the corners right along the edges uh, to give each one like a deeper shadow and i do this around doors and windows as well uh, anything that's or mainly I, I should say chimneys anything that sticks out pretty like a like a good amount I'll put some of this light tone in there um, it really gives it kind of a almost a dirty look a uh, a weathered look and it's okay to splash the the, the light tone around a little bit because uh, it'll just give it more life actually I, I think personally and under the windows I tend to do a little bit of a drip like as if uh, some of the dirt and grime of just being out in the wilderness you know out out in reality uh, drips down so I do a little bit of uh, a drippage on some of the windows All right, when I get all those highlighted, I'll be right back. All right, so we got all the light tones done. Uh, I created uh, another uh, color that I inadvertently must not have recorded, but we're doing right now, I'm using Battlefield Brown along the base board, the, the wooden uh, base of the building just to give it more of a dirt uh, so it blends with my terrain tiles. Um, I'm going to put flock and grass on them as well, but you know it's good just to have a, a nice dark base color. But the color that I created, you can see in my palette, is antique white. And you might be able to see the uh, paint bottle over there in front of my washes. It's not white. It's very, it's got a yellowed white, like a yellowed. So it looks, as it's called, antique. And uh, I, I watered it down, probably 50-50, so it's very thin. Uh, it would be kind of like what I would use if I was making a, a blend, like if I wanted to blend it with another color. And that's exactly what I wanted to do, was blend it. So I went over my models uh, and the, the buildings and I looked and I put some antique white in various locations on, on top of the white that's already there 
to disguise any fingerprints or paint that might have accidentally because uh, sometimes I'll grab the building and my thumb will get some paint on it and then I'll grab another building and then that paint would transfer to another spot on another building or something and so I use that antique white blend to disguise those do they completely cover them no I didn't want to completely just cover them I wanted it to be as you would say blended and the main reason why is I wanted the buildings not to be perfect I want there to be some imperfections some dirt spots some places that might have a spot of paint or a uh, you know just random things you know just on and by but by disguising it it made it not so sharp or not so pronounced Okay, let me go ahead and finish painting these brown and along the edges, and then I'll be right back. Okay, after applying a little bit of flock around the edges of my buildings, I am taking some tufts, and I'm going to cut them in half. Now, these tufts are from Knock, and their base are extremely hard, so it takes a little extra effort to cut them. But basically you get a rounded side and a flat side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some tacky glue on my building. And I'm going to uh, put that flat side up against the building. So the tough looks like it'll be a garden piece or, you know, a, a building or what am I trying to say? Like a little a a plant or something that gl grows right next to the building. But it's going to be growing up out of the uh, little floorboard that sticks out along the outer edge. Got my little tacky glue there. And we take a tuff and we take the flat edge, press it up against the the flat cut edge, you know, the edge I just cut, and then the bottom of it against the bottom of the board. Give a little pressure into the building, and voila, got a little, got a little bush growing out of the bottom of the building. Now I'm going to cut a bunch of tufts out, and we're going to do multiple uh, tufts for all the different buildings. And uh, basically, I put them on randomly, basically just to disguise any area that maybe the flock didn't stick to very well. Or uh, in this case, when I put it on my terrain map, cover any indiscretions uh, or discrepancies on my terrain map. Uh, but in this case, it's really just to disguise anything I might have glued onto the base. And that one's leaning out a little bit, so I got to push it in to be to grow up the side of the building and not stick out from the building. That looks pretty good. All right, let me do all these, and then I'll be back, and we'll show them all off. Now, this is not a dark ops building. This is actually a Sarissa coaching in building, but I am using it as part of my uh, battle. So let me go ahead and complete this one, and then we'll show all five buildings. I got a couple of Sarissas and three of the Dark Ops buildings, and you can kind of compare how they look next to each other. All right, just give me a second. All right, now these are all five of the buildings that I just worked on. The two on the far left are Sarissa, got a coaching inn and just a house. And then the three on the right are the dark ops bu buildings that we just did on camera. Giving you a view. Doesn't want to stay together. 
Got to lift the bottom. Got the yellow door. Got the tufts. Got the green windows and doors. And then this one has that light blue door. All right, now let's move this around a little bit so you get better camera angles. All right, give me a second to move my camera. Okay, this is that farm complex um, with the buildings cut into the table. And this was the city with now that church building was actually scratch built um, a couple of videos ago. Let's get rid of it so you can see the other buildings in town. And uh, what do you think? I think they look pretty good. Um, pull the roof up there inside all that good all that goodness. All right, let's move the camera so you can kind of see it from a different angle. Yeah, a little bit closer. Yeah, I think they all look pretty good. All right, thanks for coming out and checking out this video of me painting these Dark Ops buildings. And I'll catch you in the next video.